Besties, today we'll be doing a yoga class for stress relief, perfect for after flight or anytime you feel you need to de-stress from the problems of the world. I'm here for you, let's get started. Okay, we'll start in a meditation. So find your mat. Take any comfortable seat that suits you right now in this moment. It can be sitting up, and if sitting up isn't comfortable for you, maybe you want to lay down or sit against a wall or add any props, maybe sitting on a pillow or a book or a block or a bolster if you have any yoga props. So just find your most comfortable way to sit right now. We'll be here for a couple minutes practicing a mindfulness and awareness meditation to help us ground and start to go a little bit more inwards, a little bit more present, helping us relieve stress already from our meditation. So close your eyes in whatever seat you chose. Just starting to be aware of your breath. After we found our optimal, comfortable seat, and when I said comfortable, I really meant comfortable. It should be something that you can sit in for a couple minutes without jittering or moving or feeling any tightness. So if you feel like your hips aren't flexible enough, maybe you can place some pillows under your knees as well. Comfort is key in a deep meditation. After we covered the physical, let's go back to our mental, thinking about our breath. When we think about our breath, we think about the whole movement of our breath, the whole journey that it travels on through the nose, down the throat, into the lungs and the thoracic cage, all the way down to your belly and your pelvic floor. And then the same way out from the bottom of your pelvic floor, your belly, your chest, and out either through the nose or the mouth. Again, whatever feels comfortable to you. I always recommend inhaling and exhaling through the nose, but if it feels called to you to release through the mouth, you can do that as well. Let's take a couple more breaths, focusing on that breath, on the journey of that breath and the sensations of that breath. Being aware if you feel any differences in each breath you take. Maybe on the first breath you focused on that inhale, on the second you focused on that exhale. Maybe the first one felt a little bit longer and this next one feels a little bit shorter. Whatever you feel, just being mindful of any differences in every breath you take. Already here, focusing on your breath, being totally present in your body, you're practicing mindfulness and awareness. Already now, you're releasing stress from the body by focusing on the present moment, and not the future or the past. If your mind starts to wander, which is totally normal, don't be judgmental of it, just let it be always returning back to your breath as an anchor, as your home base, whenever it starts to wander a little too far. I'd like to invite you to focus a little bit more on the belly region now as we'll enter a slight breathing technique and practice within our meditation. The breathing technique is called deep belly breathing, which is a very easy way to release stress instantly from the body. If this is new to you or you've never done it before, you can place the hands on the belly in the beginning to really make sure you're feeling the movement physically and mentally. The breath is just belly breathing the same way it's called. 
usually most of the time we breathe from our upper body and we think of it in our chest and in our nose and in our mouth. Whereas now I want you to just focus more on the belly, feeling that belly rise and inflate on the inhale and then deflate and lower back down on the exhale. In the beginning, the hands can help you really guide that movement more in the belly. But if you've done this before, you can keep the hands on the leg or if it feels comfortable to you and you feel very connected to that belly breath, you can move the hands to the legs as well. And as you focus on this belly breath, I want you to make the exhale longer, even if it's just a little bit. When we focus on our breaths in the belly region, we're really activating our diaphragm, which is this muscle at the lower part of your rib cage, a very big muscle. When you activate your diaphragm, you activate your parasympathetic system, which is the rest and digest calming your nervous system part of the central nervous system. So we really want to activate that diaphragm in the belly region. Also massaging our abdominal organs very gently, activating our digestive system again. When we're in a state of stress, our digestive system turns off because our body goes into fight or flight. All this blood starts rushing through through your body to your shoulders and your hips which stress and anxiety usually gets stored and emotional traumas usually get stored there and our digestive system turns off so when we go into rest and digest it turns back on activating that whole system again which is what we want we want our body to work properly to feel healthy to do what it's meant to do you're not being chased by a tiger you shouldn't be in fight or flight mode in your life unless you're actually in a state of danger. Having troubles at work or troubles in your relationships should not affect you like being chased by a tiger does. <laughs> so continue those deep belly breaths with those longer exhales. And see if you're feeling differences in your energy as well. Do you feel calmer? Is your mind still wandering or is it really focused on your breath? Always without judgment, just being aware of yourself, of your practice. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here where we slowly come out of our meditation of mindfulness and awareness. Let's take one deep inhale through the nose. And then exhale slowly out the mouth. Just a little bit of extra release of any tension you might have been holding beforehand. You can feel free to keep the eyes closed now or open them. We'll go into a vagus nerve massage. Now what's the vagus nerve? It's a cranial nerve that's connected to most of your organs, which allows them to work more properly when we're in a relaxing state of mind and body. So this nerve travels right here on the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is on the sides of your neck. If you turn towards the sides, it's that really fibrous thick muscle here that usually kind of bulges out when you're turning towards the side. So if you don't know, you can look and find it, see what I'm doing and find it for yourself. You have it on both sides. So what we're gonna do is take our hands and you're gonna kind of like make a fist and your thumb will stick out and you'll just gently massage that muscle. And you can really feel the whole muscle all the way from kind of behind your ear, traveling down the side of your neck all the way to the center of your clavicle sternal, sternum joint here. 
You can do one side at a time, or you can do both at the same time. Whatever feels more comfortable for you. Again, feel free to close your eyes or look if you get confused or can't find it. <laughs> I'll be doing it here. Really feel if there's any point on that muscle that feels a little bit more tense and you can just stay there for a moment and just massage that one point for some extra release or if it feels okay, you're going down and up on both sides. Feeling deeply relaxed. And because the vagus nerve is connected to your organs, when you can stimulate it in different areas of your body like we're doing right now, it's gonna in turn activate your digestive system, which is connected to, and everything else that it's connected to, your urinary system. So in turn, by relaxing it here, we're already relaxing the other organs that it's connected to. If your legs are tired, you can always switch your seat as well. And then slowly release your hands back down to your lap. Take a couple deep breaths, just feeling any differences in your energy. If you feel more calm, if you feel like your breath is a little bit more quiet. And slow. And our last little de-stress energetic technique that we'll do today is simply to laugh. Yes, you're going to laugh alone in your room. Someone else is there. They're going to hear you laugh. So you're just going to start, okay? <laughs> and it can start fake. It can be real. You can think of something in your mind that makes you laugh. I want you to laugh so hard that somehow I can hear it through the screen, that your neighbors can hear it, your animals can hear it, that it's very energetically powered and enhanced right now. Let it go. Ready? <laughs> You just gotta go for it, okay? And if you're just watching me like, oh, she's crazy, don't be doing that. We're all crazy, okay? <laughs> so keep laughing, let it go. Let those happy muscles and those happy hormones radiate through your body, make you feel instantly flushed and at a better energy state that you were maybe before this when you wanted to feel de-stressed. Let's go for one more laugh. Hee 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 hee. Ha 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 ha. Okay, that's all. Let's go into the physical part of our practice. Let's find a tabletop. All fours. Hope you enjoyed those laughs. If you didn't laugh, I'm coming for you. <laughs> In our tabletop, we want to feel nice and stable on your hands and your legs. Open the fingertips to get a nice grip on the mat active core here so you're not really slouching in it. And we'll go into some cat cows, warming up our spine, hips, and shoulder joints. Just like we said before, where we store a lot of stress and tension and pressure. So we'll inhale, look up towards the sky, open your whole throat region as well, activating all those hormonal glands. And then exhale, pressing against the floor with your legs and your hands, rounding the spine as much as possible towards the sky above you or your roof. And then keep going at your own pace. Feel free to do this with eyes closed or eyes open. Connecting to your breath. Connecting to your posture. Every joint that's moving, every muscle that's being activated, again, knowing that you can practice mindfulness in everything you do, not just in a meditation, also in your movements, also in your daily life, when you're brushing your teeth, really feeling the toothbrush and every single bristle on that toothbrush against your teeth, against your gums, your hand holding the toothbrush, really being mindful of everything that's going on in the present moment, no matter what you're doing.
After you've done a couple regular cat cows, I'd like to invite you to do anything more creative. If that means adding some circular movements, rolling forward and back, just like a cat cow, but with just some extra oomph. A little bit more release, a little bit more flow of energy. Letting the prana, the vital life force energy within your body flow freely and get released out of anywhere that feels a little bit tighter, a little bit more closed off. Let's all come back to center. And then we'll go into some thread the needle breaths, going a little bit deeper into our shoulder joints. Inhale, the right hand comes all the way up towards the sky, opening that shoulder towards the sky as well and your heart. Exhale as you slide that right hand under your left body and under your left arm, right until you touch the floor. You don't want to touch the floor, so the hand will kind of hover above the ground. And then keep going at your own pace for four more. Inhale. Exhale. Three more. Two. Last one. Inhale up. Exhale. Let's bring that hand all the way under. And this time we'll let our shoulder get to the ground before our head touches the ground so that we make sure the weight is really in the shoulder here and less in the head. And then slowly let the head drop to the ground as well. You can keep the left hand on the floor to feel a little bit more stable. Or you can bring the left hand behind your back, maybe grabbing the right inner thigh or just resting behind your back. Every breath you take, letting the weight sink a little bit deeper into that right shoulder. A lot of times at the beginning, your body will kind of hold back and you'll feel a lot of your muscles are actively being used. And then with every breath, kind of release a little bit more. You melt a little bit more. Really learning to surrender to the posture, to your breath, to the moment, whether it be in yoga or in your daily life when you feel a stressful situation, just surrender to it. Let it be, let it pass. Feel the feelings you feel and know that they're all temporary. Always coming back to your breath as your anchor. Take one more deep breath here. And then slowly bring the left hand back to the ground if it was raised. And come back to your tabletop. Just letting the circulation flood back into your hands. Feeling any differences in the right shoulder, if it feels a little bit more loose, a little bit more free, like any stored and entered a tense energy was released from there. That's what we want to feel when we come out of those restorative postures. And let's go on to the other side. Inhale, the left hand will come up all the way reaching up towards the sky. Exhale, let's slide it under the right body, making sure that the shoulder and the hand don't touch the ground. And keep going at your own pace. We'll go for four more. And after the fifth, we'll slowly bring the shoulder all the way down to the ground. And then rest the head. Finding that beautiful thread the needle posture. Weight is totally in the shoulder, slightly in the head. Right hand can stay on the ground or come behind your back. Notice what's going on in your body. Is it working against the pose? Is your shoulder pressing against the floor? Or are you surrendering to the pose and relaxing that shoulder muscle so that you can fold a little bit deeper into it.
deep breath. And just like we did in our meditation, noticing if every breath you take is a little bit different. Maybe the first one feels a little bit tight, just like the muscles did. And after a couple breaths, it feels a little bit slower, a little bit deeper. That's what we want to feel in these, post in these postures. Even when the hands start to tingle, come back to your breath. Know that we're just moving circulation around. Clearing any blockages of energy and staleness of energy. One more deep breath. And then slowly come back to your tabletop. Feeling that circulation flooding again. Noticing any differences in your shoulder joints. And the circulation. And then we'll sit back on our heels. And we'll bring our forehead to the ground, almost like a child's pose. But we're prepping for rabbit pose. And in rabbit pose, we'll interlace our hands behind our back. And then lift up onto our knees so that we're on the crown of our head. From here, the hands will fall overhead. Getting a nice deep shoulder stretch here, but in this very grounded and relaxing posture. It's also an inversion, so we're getting some blood flow to the heart and to the head. Every breath you take, let the hands fall a little bit more and a little bit more. Let's take one more deep breath here in our rapid pose. And then we'll slowly unlace the hands and take a child's pose, sitting on the heels. Feel free to take any variation of child's pose that suits you. If that's wide-legged or knees together, if that's hands forward or hands back, whatever feels best for you right now. <sighs> Connecting third eye to the ground. Connecting to that beautiful, intuitive, and creative energy that we have within us. And every breath you take, sinking a little bit deeper onto your heels. Feeling your belly inflate and deflate against your legs or between your legs. Now I'd like to invite you to really visualize that you're breathing from your back. Normally we like to think about our breath on the front side of our body from our chest and face. But right now in our child's pose, as you feel your body lift and lower, really visualize that the breath is working from your back. And see if you can play around with it. If you can feel it on the lower back, in the mid back, in the upper back, or if it just feels like the whole back is breathing, that's okay too. Really creating lots of space in our back, where we usually feel very weighted, very tense. At the same time, we're getting a beautiful stretch here on our joints and our hips. 
and legs, releasing any tense pressure and energy and emotional trauma that we've stored there in the past. If your legs start to tingle and fall asleep, that's okay too. Return to your breath. Know that this is a part of the restorative practice. your body keep sinking let it feel heavier and heavier be mindful of what you feel just being aware of it without any judgment if you feel any tingles and sensations if you feel nothing Just being totally present within your pose and your body. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. As full as possible, filling up with new oxygen and releasing completely. And slowly bring the hands back in front of you if they aren't there already. And then slowly rise back up to your tabletop, feeling like a fresh seed rooting from the ground and growing. Tuck the toes underneath and let's find a gentle downward facing dog, lifting the hips up high, grounding in the heels, moving the weight back from your hands. If it feels a little tight at first, feel free to add any movement that feels right to you. If you're okay, you can just stay in that static energy, just holding still and breathing. Let's take one more deep breath. And we'll bring the right foot in front of us between our hands, whatever way feels good to you, if that's lifting the leg up high or just sliding it forward. And let's drop the left knee to find a low lunge. Let's stay high on the fingertips here, tenting up your fingertips, strengthening those fingers as well, not so much in the wrist joint. And just sliding forward and back, letting the energy flow freely in and out of our right hip joint. Connecting the movement to your breath, however it feels good. And also moving however it feels good. If you wanna do what I'm moving, doing with the forward and back movement, if you feel more called to a little right and left, you can do that as well. And then slowly come back forward. And we'll bring the right foot to the left side and the right knee to the right side to find pigeon. If pigeon is too deep for you, you can place a pillow under your right glute or a block or anything to lift up your hips. If it's okay, you're with me on the ground. Take a second to look at your back leg and make sure it's straight and not turning outwards or not in line with the body. Really important to make sure that the knee and the top of your foot are on the ground. From here, we're gonna inhale, open the heart, look up towards the sky. And then exhale, start to lower down to the ground. Lower as much as you feel comfortable, if that means your whole chest is on the ground or staying on your elbows, whatever feels good to you. Make sure that you're not leaning too much on that right hip and that you're moving the weight to the left leg so that your hips are nice and balanced. For more challenge, you can bring that right foot closer to your right elbow. For less challenge, leave the right foot by your hips. We'll be here for about a minute in this deep hip stretch. 
and quad stretch on the left leg. So again, find that meditative energy of mindfulness and awareness. Coming back to your breath always as your anchor. Whenever you feel, oh, I've had enough of this pose. It's too much for me. I don't like it. It's not comfortable. That's when you know the pose is working. That's the point where you're actually growing. You want to get to that point within these restorative poses. That point where the pose feels difficult. That's where it's starting. That's where we grow. That's where we learn how to deal with these stressful emotions and thoughts. You don't give in to them. You don't say, oh, this is uncomfortable for me, so I'm gonna get out and do what feels comfortable and easy to me. No, you say, I'm gonna breathe through it. I'm gonna to return to my anchor. I'm gonna find that peace that I wanna find. I wanna control my emotions and control my reactions. Only you have that power, nobody else. Feel any emotional things that want to be released. That's totally normal. Whenever we go into deep restorative hip postures, sometimes people feel the need to scream and shout and cry, and maybe you just need to give in to that and not hold it back. Let your body lead the way. Feel those emotions and be with them. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then slowly come back up onto your hands. Tuck the toes behind you. Let's come back to our downward facing dog. Taking a moment of mindful awareness. If you feel any differences in your hip joints, in your thighs, and then slowly moving to the next side, bringing the left foot all the way through your hands, helping if you need to with your hands or whatever way you need, dropping the right knee, tenting the fingertips. Let's go into those movements of releasing any stale energy in the left hip. Connecting the movement to your breath. Maybe forward and back. Maybe right and left. Ooh, got a couple of cracks there on that right left movement. Sometimes it always feels nice to do these kind of unconventional movements that just feel right. It's also really good for your mind and for your body to do things that don't feel normal or something that you're not told to do. Just so that your muscles can learn new things, your mind can become stronger, more prepared for anything in the future, any weird movements that might happen. <sighs> Let's come back forward, and then we'll slide the left foot to the right side. Keep that left knee on the left side and drop it to find our pigeon pose. Again, making sure that that back leg is straight with the knee and the top of the foot on the ground, using a prop if you need under your left glute. If you're okay, you're with me, slowly lowering down onto your elbows or onto your chest, making sure that you're rolling the weight towards that right hip here. You wanna move that right hip towards the ground so that your hips are level. Again, feel free to bring that left foot a little bit more forward for more intensity or bring it a little bit closer towards your hip for less intensity. Be with your breath, be with your body. So 
Surrender to the pose. Let the pose do the work for you. Always remember to return to your breath. If your mind starts to wander too far, be totally connected to this feeling, to this deep stretch within your left hip joint with your right quad for the thigh. Be with the feeling and breathe through it. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. So proud of you for sticking through, for being with those feelings. <sighs> Let's slowly come back up onto our hands. And then we'll just move the weight to our left hip and round that right leg forward. Coming to a Baddha Konasana, bound angle. The feet will be close to the body. <sighs> when you're ready, inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, lower down for a forward fold within our bound angle posture or butterfly pose. After we did a couple of poses, working on our hips isometrically, asymmetrically. Now we're gonna do a couple of symmetrical stretches, like our bound angle. Feeling this inner hip and inner groin stretch. Releasing a little bit of tension with every breath you take. Letting the weight fall and fall forward without having the need to pull your weight forward. Just let the weight of your body and your breath do the work. And slowly come back up. And then we'll open the feet wide to find a wide angle straddle leg posture. Flex the toes so that the knee is facing upwards and not collapsing inwards, which sometimes happens. So make sure the toes are facing up towards the sky. And again, we'll inhale, hands will come up. And then exhale, fold forward. Wherever that gets to. If that means staying on your hands, if that means coming down onto your elbows or the whole chest on the ground, everyone will feel differently in this pose. Breathe through it, be with your feelings, be with the emotions that rise within a deep stretch. Know that your breath is there and is your best friend through these postures. As long as you're breathing deeply and mindfully, the pose will feel more simple and more easy every time you do it. Mm. 
When you're breathing deeply, it tells your mind that you're, that you're in a safe and comfortable place. And it allows the muscles to let you go a little bit deeper. So you want to breathe a little bit more deeply and a little bit more slowly. And you'll see amazing changes physically. You'll see how your body just opens up to you. One more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly come back up. And then we'll close the legs and we'll find fire log pose. Now in fire log, we'll bring the left leg forward and make sure it's kind of parallel to the line of your mat. And then we'll bring the right leg on top of that. This looked very simple, but it's not as simple as it looks. You want your ankle and your knee and your knee and your ankle on both feet to be connected. Now, if this is not happening for you, you'll probably be somewhere either like this, or if this isn't happening for you, feel free to straighten that left leg and just do half with the right leg in front of you. That's also an option. From here, inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, slowly bring your hands onto your legs and weight your, bring your weight of your body onto your legs, getting a little bit deeper into that hip stretch. If you don't wanna do this, you can stay up at center. You can keep your hands on the ground by you, whatever feels good to you. Hmm. Breathing deeply, we're going in more into the outer hips right now. Before we were working on the inner hips, so now we're going into outer. So feel the differences in these stretches. If you feel any different sensations, if it feels the same to you, that's okay too. Just doing this little body scan of mindfulness and awareness within every pose we do. Take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly come back up. And we'll tilt the right leg up so that the foot gets to the ground. Bring that left leg towards you to find this seated pose. Make sure that you're really grounded on both hips and you're not leaning too far towards one side. We'll come into a seated twist. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, left hand to the outer right knee. Right hand can stay behind your back or maybe round back to your inner left thigh. That left hand can stay active in an open palm or in a fist, or it can go all the way down and grab your ankle for a little bit more shoulder flexibility. Whatever feels fun to you in the moment. And in our twist, we really want to twist from the upper back. So don't just rely on your arm pushing you and just kind of feeling this really kind of slouchy twist. You want to actively work here to open up your heart towards the back of the room so that your shoulders become in line with each other. You can really look at your shoulders to see like, oh, are they in line? Or is one like all the way over here? And if it just feels really tight and you can't get there, breathe through it and slowly find that twist, that deep twist. Really massaging the abdominal organs, activating and stimulating our digestive system, which has been shut off due to a lot of stress and anxiety. Let's take one more deep breath here in our seated twist. And then we'll 
come back forward with our upper body and find cow face legs. In our cow face legs, we want the knees to be stacked up onto each other like this. If this isn't available to you, you can stay in that seated twist leg or you can straighten the left leg underneath, which was also an option for the seated twist. Yes. From here, we'll inhale the hands up, exhale, lower down, and connect your third eye to your knee. You can just hug your legs here. We're just going for the cow face legs today. Getting that external hip stretch and making a lot of space in our lower back, which is a place we usually get a lot of strain and pain from, from sitting or working long hours. Let's take one more deep breath here. And slowly come up and here's where it gets a little fun and tricky with these cow face legs you're just going to start to lean back to your back keeping the legs crossed and then you'll bring your left hand to your right leg to find a deeper plank twist if it feels called and available to you you can bring your right hand to your left leg as well to find cat grabbing its tail pose in yin yoga it's a very restorative pose. If this feels like too much, so you don't have to grab with your right hand, you can just find that deeper clung twist with an open right hand. Looking towards the right side. Again, stimulating our digestive system. And this deep twist, deep breath. Hmm. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly bring our knees back to our chest and roll up to a seat. Preparing for the other side, we'll bring the right leg forward in line with our mat and the left leg on top to find our fire log pose just like we did on the other side. Flexing in the feet to protect the knees if you need to take any variation, do so. If the leg stays up and you're not folding, if you want to straighten the right leg and do half. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, slowly bringing your weight onto your legs. Going deep into that external hip stretch. If it feels nice and comfy, you can also lower down the chest onto the legs and then bring the hands forward and wrap around the legs if you're super nice and flexy here in the external hip. Taking any variation that feels called to you. One more deep breath here. And then coming back up. Tilting the left knee up towards you and bringing the foot onto the ground. And sliding that right leg a little bit closer to you to prep for a seated twist. Make sure you're really grounded on both sit bones. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, right hand to the outer left knee. Left hand comes either behind the back, close to the body, or wrapping all the way around and grabbing that right inner thigh. 
using both hands to help you find more length in your spine and a little bit more opening in that upper shoulder and upper back. Deep breaths here, feeling and being aware of what's going on in your belly region right now. Do you feel like everything's kind of massaging each other, all your abdominal organs? Yes, it may sound weird, but that's what's happening and that's what we want to happen. Massaging and cleansing and detoxing. Feeling more healthy, less tense. This is what we want out of our practice. This is what we want in our life to be our norm. We don't want stress to be our norm. We don't want digestive issues to be our norm. <laughs> I hope. Again, take a moment to look at your shoulders and see if they're in line with each other or if they could be a little bit more in line with each other. Let's take one more deep breath. And then turn back forward and find cow face legs where we bring the knees on top of each other. If this isn't available to you, you stay in that seated twist leg or you straighten the right leg underneath. Inhale, the hands come all the way up, finding length in your spine. Exhale, lowering down, third eye to your knee and giving your legs a little hug. Connecting to that external hip stretch. And feeling all the space you've created in your lower back. Be aware of your breath and your body. Be aware of any changes with every breath, with every little adjustment you do. If you can release any tense muscles that might be being used without you even realizing. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly come up onto our backs, just like we did before. Bring that right hand to that left leg for a deeper clank twist. And then if you feel called to it, you can grab the right leg with your left hand to find cat grabbing its tail, looking towards the left as well. Breathing deeply into this deep twist. Being aware of what's going on in your belly region. Every breath you take, melting your shoulders a little bit more towards the ground as well. Releasing any stored up tension there. deep breath and then roll onto your back and give your legs a big hug for wind release pose full body flexion feeling so compact and safe and bundled within yourself and then lower the head onto the ground and let's grab our feet for happy baby pose. I'm grabbing on the outer rim of my foot. My knees are on the outside of my arm so that I can pull and have more space to go deeply into my hips. My feet are flexed and looking up towards the ceiling roof or sky. And I'm rolling my tailbone so that my back is fully grounded. My lower back is completely on the ground and my hips aren't lifting up towards the sky. So you should feel super grounded in this deep hip stretch. 
take a couple deep breaths here in the stillness. Maybe pulling a little slightly out to the feet, going deeper into that hip stretch, only as if you want your knees to touch the ground. They won't, but it's the vision. And then if it feels right to you, you can start rocking right and left. Maybe smiling, channeling your inner happy baby. Smiling baby, playing with its feet. <sighs> also getting a little back massage, which is never a problem. And then we'll come back to center and lower the legs onto the ground. We'll go into an instant relaxation technique. And when we do that, we want our body to be really compact and close together. So close the legs, bring your hands by your hips, and I'll direct you through it. Start squeezing your toes and squeezing your ankles together, clenching your legs together, clenching and pushing your knees together, your thighs together, clenching your glutes, squeezing your abdominal muscles, making your hands into fists and squeezing them against your hips, squeezing your arms against your body, Closing in the chest, squeezing the shoulders around the chest, squeezing the head towards your chest. Everything is squeezing inwards and clenching, even the facial muscles, all the little squinching lemon face, sour faces. Squeeze, 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 and release. It should feel amazing. How good does it feel to release tension and pressure from the body? From here, we'll go straight into our Shavasana. So find your more comfortable position. If that means taking a variation or adding any props, feel free to do that. Or just open the legs up wide to the width of your mat. Open your hands up to the width of your mat. Roll your shoulders away from the ears and back onto the mat, making sure they're nice and relaxed and heavy. Maybe tuck the chin a little bit closer towards the chest so that your neck feels very lengthened, no stress. Then we'll go into our Shavasana with a little Yoga Nidra practice. And Yoga Nidra is the yogic sleep. Going deep into our subconsciousness, and feeling deeply connected and at peace with ourselves. So first, just like we did in the beginning of our practice, channeling our physical body. How do you feel right now with your body against the ground? Letting the body feel heavy and weighted. Being completely still and remaining in that stillness throughout our whole Shavasana. Connecting to any sensations you feel within your body and your muscles and just being with it. Letting your bones feel heavy, feeling like the weight of your body is moving deeply into the ground beneath you. After we focus on that physical, let's connect to our breath again. Feeling the movement of your breath, the belly rising and falling, the journey of your breath from the nose to the pelvic floor, and from the pelvic floor out the nose. Being deeply mindful and aware of any sensation or any differences within your body or your breath. From here, we'll move into our Sankalpa. And the Sankalpa is an affirmation, intention, in the present moment, in the present tense, of whatever your heart desires, what do you long for? 
What do you deeply desire within your heart, within your life? Take a moment to think of whatever that is. Once you find it, create a phrase, a sentence, an affirmation in the present tense as if you already have it, as if it's already happening. For example, if you want more freedom in your life, you can repeat to yourself, I am free. And you'll repeat your affirmation or intention, your sankalpa, to yourself in your mind at least three times or more. I'll give you a moment to either find it or if you found it, to just keep repeating it. Remember that it must be in the present tense, feeling as though you already have it, as if it's already happening. After you've completed your Sankalpa practice, we'll move to a body scan. And this is just to really deeply connect the sensations within your body without having to move, feeling it from the inside, from your internal being, from your toes all the way to the top of your head. Feel free to do this at your own pace. I'll give you a moment to scan through. Try to really cover every part of your body feeling any sensations or radiant energy that you get from that area. And once you complete tying them all together, feeling the energy and vibrations of your body, all your body parts connected. Slowly, whenever you complete your body scan, you return to your breath, always returning back to your home base, to your anchor. Every inhale you take feels like a wave rushing up, filling you up with calmness and serenity from the world. And every exhale you feel this wave rushing down and releasing any fear and tension from your life and your body. <sighs> Deep, full breaths. Connecting to that belly breath that we did in the beginning of the practice as well. Finding those deeper and longer exhales. Feeling heavy and calm within your physical energy. Let's take a couple more deep breaths together. And then slowly start to awaken your physical body, wiggling your fingers and toes. Any other movement that feels called to you, and then slowly using your body to help you come up to a comfortable seat, any seat that feels called to you. <sighs> Feel the circulation flowing from your head to your feet again. Feel this radiant energy. This open energy from your heart to the world in this beautiful posture, tall spine, shoulders rolled back. Take one more deep breath here in your seat. And then bring your hands to heart center. 
Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you feel relaxed and de-stressed. If you liked it, please leave a comment down below letting me know how it went for you. Leave a like on the video, thumbs up, and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Bye. See you in the next class.